friends and welcome to Studio Classroom. We're so glad you've joined us for our lesson today. My name is Anne-Marie. And my name is John. Friends, today is a great day to learn something new. Yes, it is. So let's do that together. Before we get into today's lesson, we have a question for you. Here it is. The talk about it question is, what is the most impressive building you have ever visited and what does it look like? Okay, what is an impressive building I've seen? Well, one building I've seen that left an impression on me is uh, Taipei Yiling Yi, Taipei 101. I think it's beautiful how it looks kind of like bamboo. I think one of the most impressive buildings I've seen before it's actually two buildings, the Patronus Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur. Those are some pretty impressive buildings. Wow, yeah. There are a lot of really impressive modern buildings, aren't there? But many buildings that are ancient are also really impressive. I love learning the history of buildings. Well, you're in luck, John, because today we have a history lesson. We're going to be talking all about Notre Dame de Paris. Let's get into our first reading for the day. Notre Dame de Paris. After a disastrous fire, this ancient site is now fully restored. On April 15, 2019, the people of Paris, France, were shocked to see the Notre Dame de Paris Cathedral in flames. The cathedral had stood for hundreds of years, but the fire nearly destroyed it. Hundreds of firefighters fought to save the building, but the fire still did extensive damage. Since then, the building has been closed for repairs, but this Sunday, it is scheduled to be open to the public once more. Hello everyone, welcome to Language Lab. I'm Jack. So we look at disastrous, this word is from disaster, this word is from disaster, it means that Natalie made several disastrous mistakes because she was rushing to finish her project, so she had to do it over. Natalie, because she was rushing to finish her project, so she had to do it over. The spread of false information online had a disastrous impact on public trust in news sources. 网络上假讯息的传播让大众对于新闻来源的信任造成了重大的影响。或是, overfishing could have disastrous effects on the oceans and the world in general. 过度捕捞可能会对海洋和整个世界造成严重的影响。再来看形容词 extensive 意思是广泛的或大量的。譬如, the library has an extensive collection of rare books that draws experts from all over the world. 这间图书馆收藏大量珍贵的书籍吸引了来自世界各地的专家前来。或者是, the company made some extensive changes in its policies so it could stay in business. 该公司对其政策进行了一些大量的修改，以便能够继续经营下去。Extensive的副词是 extensively. 譬如, Lucy traveled extensively across Europe, experiencing different cultures and food. Lucy 畅游欧洲各地，体验不同的文化和美食。All right, friends, are you ready to get right into our lesson? We read here, after a disastrous fire, this ancient site is now fully restored. 
Let's talk about this word ancient first. When we say that something is ancient, we are saying that it belongs to the distant past. That's right. You could say the scientists dug up ancient pottery, something that was really, really old. Here we're using the word ancient to describe a site. S-I-T-E, and that means a location. It sounds a lot like that word site, you know, seeing something, but S-I-T-E means a location, and this ancient site is now fully restored. So fully restored here means to be fixed and returned to its original condition, right? Here's another way you could use fully restored in a sentence, friends. There was damage to people's homes from the flooding, but now they are fully restored. They have been brought back to their original condition. That's right. All right, so we read about Notre Dame de Paris here on April 15th, 2019, or 2019. The people of Paris, France, were shocked to see the Notre Dame de Paris Cathedral in flames. So in flames means on fire. Uh, flames that are that flames are literally burning gas, right? But in flames is not a good situation. No, although you can use in flames in different ways where it wouldn't be a bad situation either. So for example, you could say we lit a log under the campfire and the whole pile went up in flames. So the idea here is that something is burning. We read on here, the cathedral had stood for hundreds of years, but the fire nearly destroyed it. Now this word stood is really interesting because sometimes we see the word stand or stood or sat when we're talking about like a mountain or a big building, for example. But here when we're talking about a big building, we use the word stood to say that it is occupying a place or a location. That's right. You could say the castle stood in the middle of a big open field. So this cathedral is old and hundreds of firefighters fought to save the building. Actually, both of us have younger brothers who are firefighters. We're so proud of them. Yes, and they're both named Sam. <laughs> yeah, how <laughs> random is that? <laughs> so, uh, but we read, but the fire still did what kind of damage? Extensive damage. Now you just saw that word extensive in the language lab, so you know that we're talking about some really serious damage here. That's right, uh, damage that happens to a large degree. You could also use that word in other ways. You could say, I did extensive studies in science, you know, something that goes farther than just the normal. Um, Finally, we read, since then, the building has been closed for repairs, but this Sunday, it is scheduled to be open to the public once more. All right, that's why we're talking about this famous location today. There's a phrase there we should know, once more, and what does that mean, Anne Marie? Well, when we say once more, we're just talking about something being done another time or something in succession. So it means that it was open at one point in time. It was closed, but now it's going to be open again. I see. So you could say, we didn't catch any fish last time. Let's try once more this week. Well, friends, once more, it's time for our reading. Notre Dame de Paris Notre Dame took nearly two centuries to build, from 1163 to 1345, and even after its completion, new features continued to be added. Repairs to the iconic cathedral were done with painstaking accuracy, using methods from its original construction in the Middle Ages. The scientist spent years doing painstaking research to find a cure for the rare disease. The policeman's painstaking investigation involved going through numerous clues to find out the truth about the crime. 
这位警察费尽心思调查，透过无数的线索来寻找犯罪的真相。他的副词是 painstakingly， 例如 ，The artist painstakingly arranged his paintings in a way that told the story of a hero。这位艺术家精心地将他的画作安排成讲述一位英雄故事的方式。All right, friends. Let's continue on with our history lesson. We read here: Notre Dame took nearly two centuries to build, from 1163 to 1345. All right, John. We have to say something here for a minute because, as you might have heard, friends, there's a couple different pronunciations for how we have been saying Notre Dame, Notre Dame, and also we have this little article in the middle: De Paris. Why are there so many pronunciations here? Well, first of all, we're talking about words that are originally in French, so there's the proper French pronunciation. But when you're speaking in English, especially in the U.S., you'll hear people say this、uh, this name in a lot of different ways: Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame. You know, that's that's classic American mispronunciation. But just get ready to hear that name in different ways. Same thing with Paris, Paris. Paris, you'll hear that in different ways. So, friends, it's really not a question of right and wrong in this situation. It's a question of saying things in the original language or saying things in English. So, just keep that in mind as we continue on. I'm going to try to stick to one pronunciation for you from now on. I will try to say Notre Dame so that we do not get confused. But we see a word here in this sentence, and that is the word nearly. Let's talk about that for a moment. Okay, nearly here means almost. Or close to, you know, you, we could say, "I was nearly at the end of the race when I fell and broke my leg." By the time we got back, it was nearly midnight. It was almost midnight. Okay, but we read here after its completion, new features continued to be added. So it sounds like this building was quite a process. Definitely, and it's always being built. Things are being added. Completion means well, the state of being completed or being done. You know, the the finished state of something. So we read on here: repairs to the iconic cathedral were done with painstaking accuracy. So the idea here is that after the building was damaged, they wanted to fix it in a way that would reflect the way it was originally intended to be. That's why we read here: painstaking accuracy. So let's talk about that word accuracy for a moment. Okay, accuracy means the quality of being correct. Or precise. They're trying to be very specific about following the old pattern, so that when people visit this restored cathedral, they can see it the way it was before. Hopefully. Yeah, exactly. And here's another way you can use accuracy in a sentence. He was able to hit the target with surprising accuracy. Okay, so they are repairing the cathedral with painstaking accuracy, using methods from its original construction in the Middle Ages. Now, a method, friends, is a word that we've talked about before. This is a particular procedure for accomplishing something, and it's especially if it's a systematic or established. Established way of doing something. Yeah, you could say, "Oh, she had a strange method of cooking pancakes. She would mix the mix in a blender or something like that." So you can have a method for doing everything, from studying to、uh, all kinds of things. So they're using the method from the original construction in the Middle Ages, cutting the boards in a certain way and putting the stones together. What a big project! It sounds like a huge project. All right, friends, we have more to learn in just a moment. Right after today's info cloud. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Info Cloud. Garrett, do you know what the national animal of Scotland is? Uh, no. What is it? The unicorn, a horse with a horn on its head. Wow, that's not even a real animal. Though I do love mythical animals. Do you know about the phoenix? Ah, that's a magical bird, right? Yes. After it dies, it catches fire and becomes a pile of ashes. But then, out of those ashes, it rises again to live a new long life. 
Hey, that sounds like a phrase I've heard before. To rise from the ashes. That's where the phrase comes from. Like the phoenix, if you rise from the ashes, you come out of difficult circumstances as a new person. A new person? Oh, like someone who has a new outlook on life. That's right. You might say Jimmy rose from the ashes after he was fired and started his own successful business. How else can you use the phrase? How about the city of New Orleans rose from the ashes after the hurricane and became a thriving metropolis? It goes to show that sometimes disaster is not the end. And like the phoenix, we can rise from the ashes. 中文有一句成语“浴火重生”，形容在艰苦的环境中重新站立起来。英文可以说 “rise from the ashes”， 字面上是从灰烬中升起。“rise from the ashes” 就可以形容从失败中再一次取得成功。Jimmy rose from the ashes when his new business succeeded. Jimmy 在他的新的事业中重新取得很大的成就。根据传说，凤凰死后身体会烧成灰烬，然后再度重生。Rise from the ashes 这个用语就是从这里来的。这就是今天的 Info Cloud， 我们下次云端见。Notre Dame de Paris. Notre Dame is an amazing example of Gothic architecture. The builders of Gothic cathedrals thought of their buildings as places where people go to meet with God, so they tried to make the buildings look like heaven. This means the cathedrals all have tall ceilings supported by columns, with large windows that are made of stained glass. As a result. The buildings are filled with colored light, which is intended to call to mind descriptions of heaven that say it has streets paved with gold. Images of cathedrals like Notre Dame can convey part of their beauty and splendor, but they don't compare with the experience of seeing them in person. Splendor, 这个名词意思呢是壮丽、辉煌。例如 ，The splendor of the starry night sky never fails to inspire a sense of wonder. 灿烂的星空永远都能激发人们好奇心。或是 ，We saved up for months to experience the splendor of a five-star resort for our vacation. 我们存了几个月的钱，就是为了在度假时体验五星级度假村的豪华奢侈。或是 ，The opera singer's voice filled the outdoor theater, adding to the splendor of the evening. 这位歌剧演唱家的歌声充满了整个露天剧场，为当晚增添了光彩。Okay, friends. Let's move on here. Notre Dame is an amazing example of Gothic architecture. All right. So we have this word Gothic here, and this is to describe a very specific type of architecture. It is a style of architecture in Europe between the 12th and 16th centuries. And when you see Gothic architecture, it usually is made up of pointed arches and large windows. Yeah, originally the Goths were like a people group in Europe. These days,、um, Gothic, we can talk about either that style. But a fun thing to know is if you describe someone's clothing now as Goth, G-O-T-H,、uh, short for Gothic. It means that they dress in like a lot of black colors. Maybe have like really dark makeup and like really maybe dyed their hair black. We call that gothic. So this sort of moody kind of style. Yeah. So gothic is a subculture in a lot of European and American 
countries. So, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a type of architecture. So that word has two different meanings there, friends. Keep that in mind. The builders of Gothic cathedrals thought of their buildings as places where people go to meet with God. So they tried to make the buildings look like heaven. Now, what is heaven, friends? Well, this is the place where God is and where those who follow him go when they die. That's right. You could say, after I die, I want to go to heaven. Yeah, so people are trying to make their buildings a place for thinking about God, right? We're talking about the Christian religion here, and it's really interesting because Jesus, of course, taught you don't have to be in a building but uh, to, to worship God. But these cathedrals are still a lasting reminder of a certain time in history, and we read more about them. This means the cathedrals all have tall ceilings supported by columns with large windows that are made of stained glass. I definitely think about stained glass when I think about cathedrals, right? Yeah, stained glass is really pretty. It's colored glass and it's used to make designs or pictures and you often see this in church windows. That's right. You could say the stained glass window had a lot of pictures of the saints in there. And finally we read, as a result, the buildings are filled with colored light, which is intended to call to mind descriptions of heaven that say it has streets paved with gold. Okay, call to mind means to cause memories or thoughts to come to your head. That's right. We read on here images of cathedrals like Notre Dame can convey part of their beauty and splendor, but they don't compare with the experience of seeing them in person. Okay, so what is it about taking pictures, Anne-Marie? I feel like I'm on vacation to beautiful places like the Grand Canyon one time. I took a picture of the beautiful Grand Canyon, but then when I looked at it on my phone, it didn't look that exciting. And maybe that's because I'm not great at taking pictures, but what, why can't pictures capture the beauty of famous places? This is a really good question, especially in this day and age when people are taking so many photos when they go on vacation, putting them on Facebook or Instagram or other places like that. Um, I don't know, I think things just seem so much better in person, colors look brighter and experiences are just so much better when you're there yourself. I think that's the way heaven is too. We try to make a cathedral that's in a picture of it, but it's not as good as the real deal. Well, friends, it's time for our fun fact. Hello, fact friends. I am Detective Ernest Finder, and I have a fun fact for you today. Did you know that there are bees bzz, that live at Notre Dame and make honey? Ha, it's true. Did you also know that the splendor of bees is greater than the splendor of anything man-made? It's true, those little guys can build a beautiful house, and it's sweet too. And that is today's Fun Bee Fact. Okay, friends, here's a question for us to end our lesson with. What is the most beautiful place you have ever seen? Wow, okay, I mentioned the Grand Canyon before. I think maybe the Grand Canyon is one of the most beautiful places I have ever seen. It's just amazing to see the beauty of the natural world. It definitely is. I think for me, I have multiple places that I really love. Any place where there's water and mountains together, I really love that scenery. It's just so beautiful. It's true, wow. Well, there are many beautiful places and humans for a long time have tried to capture some of that beauty in our buildings, haven't we? Yes, we have, and we have more to learn about one particular building tomorrow. So make sure you come back and join us, friends. We'll see you then right here on Studio, Studio Classroom. Classroom. A good friend lasts a lifetime I am so proud to have you in my life A good friend lasts a lifetime